Hi, I'm Charlene Laney, co-founder of Newmaker Financial and certified financial planner. I am here today with a very special guest who is an estate planning attorney based out of the Denver metro area. Her name is Anna Burr, and she is here to talk to us today about a very special topic um, dear to my heart, and that is pet trust. So Anna, I would love for you to introduce yourself briefly and tell us, please, what is a pet trust? Yes. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. I'm Anna Burr with Burr Law. I'm an estate planning attorney in Denver. I run my own firm and we help people with any kind of incapacity or end of life legal planning, um, trusts, wills, powers of attorney, and living wills primarily. And then pet trusts can be a part of that. A pet trust, to give it a definition, is also known as an animal trust. And it is a type of honorary trust. And I've just thrown out a whole bunch of words there. <laughs> so an honorary trust is kind of a general term for any time a sum of money is set aside for, for something other than a person. So okay. you might create an honorary trust to make sure that somebody's gravestone or tomb is cared for. Right. You may also do it in the form of a pet trust to make sure that your animal is cared for. Okay. All right. Thank you for the definition and for breaking down the words that you use. I know sometimes in our respective professions, it's easy to get very much into the jargon. So thank you for keeping it frank and understandable for those of us who do not practice law. I try. <laughs> now, with a pet trust, why would someone consider setting one up? So a pet trust would really be for the benefit of a beloved animal. Um, I, I think there's a, I believe it was Leona Helmsley is an actress from a long time ago who left her entire estate to her cat. Um, that is an extreme example, but it but it's a perfect example of what a pet trust is. More realistically, somebody might set up a pet trust to care for an animal that will outlive them. Um, something like a bird or a tortoise. Maybe somebody has a um, a show animal, something that has been registered with the AKC or another organization, and they breed this animal for income, and so they want to kind of continue that line. Sometimes people just really, really love their pets, and they want to make sure that they're taken care of if they are not going to be around anymore to do so themselves. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's huge. And I can't think of a time where I've never had a pet in my life <laughs> that, that mattered so much to me. And so I imagine that as people get into their more elderly years, when they're thinking about their animals that act as their companions, that they want to make sure they're taken care of. But I hadn't even thought about those other instances where you might own a show animal or the animal gen generates some sort of income for you. So thank you for those examples. Um, we are going to talk more folks about pet trust in the following video. So stay tuned the next week and the week after we'll hear more from Anna Burr about this very fun topic for those of you who are also animal lovers like us. Uh, if you haven't yet, please like, share, and subscribe. And for more information about Anna Burr, we've left a link to her website if you want to contact her for information about pet trusts, uh, trust in estates, wills, things like that. Please reach out to her and she'd be happy to answer any of your questions. We'll see you next week.